guys, it's Jane and welcome back to Mystery Monday. Well, it's awards season in the mystery crime fiction area of the world. Um, last week I ran through a number of awards including the shortlist for the Hammett Prize. Uh, this week I'm back with a couple more shortlists um, for awards that are going to be announced second weekend of October at Bauschikon, which is the World Mystery Convention. Um, there's a number of different awards given out at Bauschikon. I'm today going to talk about the Anthony Awards, which are probably the biggest, best known fan award. Um, and also the Seamus Award, which is awarded by the Private Investigator Writers Association. So they're all PI sort of novels. Firstly, the Anthony Awards. The shortlist this year starts with Lamentation by Joe Clifford. Lamentation is the story of two brothers torn apart by tragedy in their early life, which has affected them each deeply but in very different ways. Chris suffers from an all-consuming drug addiction and Jay's problem is paralyzing guilt. After Jay negotiates his estranged brother's release from the county jail, Chris disappears into the night and as Jay begins to search for him, he is plunged into a cauldron of ugly lies and long-kept secrets. Okay, the second um, book on the shortlist is The Secret Place by Tana French. This is the fifth of the Dublin Murder Squad books, um, which started with In the Woods. The Secret Place is a board where the girls at St Kilda's school can pin up their secrets anonymously, and it's normally a mishmash of gossip and covert cruelty, but today there is something different. The photo on the card shows a boy who was found murdered a year ago on the grounds of St Kilda's, the girls' boarding school in a leafy suburb of Dublin. And the caption says, I know who killed him. Third uh, book on the shortlist is After I'm Gone by Laura Lipman. And this is a story which explores how one man's disappearance echoes through the lives of five women he left behind, his wife, his daughters, and his mistress. Fifth on the short list is The Long Way Home by Louise Penny, which is number 10 in her Inspector Gamache series. And I'm sorry about all this pronunciation. Um, the um, Louise Penny books are set in Quebec, and it's all very Frenchophone. And um, yeah, that's not my strong suit, but here goes. Happily retired to a village, Armand Gamache, former Chief Inspector of Homicide with the Surette du Quebec, has found a piece he only imagined possible. That is, of course, until his new neighbour, Clara Morrow, ropes him in to helping find her missing artist husband. Okay, the last book on the shortlist for the Anthonys is Truth Be Told by Hank Philippi Ryan. This won the Agatha Award for Best Novel earlier in the year. It's number three in the Jane Ryland, Jake Brogan series, with Jane Ryland being a uh, journalist investigator and um, Jake Brogan being a homicide detective. The story of Truth Be Told begins with an everyday tragedy. A middle-class family is evicted from their suburban home. Uh, in digging up the facts on this and on other foreclosures, reporter Ryland soon learns the truth behind a big buck scheme and the surprising players who will stop at nothing, including murder, to keep their goal a secret. Okay, so those are the nominees for the Anthony Award. The Seamus Awards, which I think has actually probably got the best name of any of these awards for best PI novel, um, is quite a different list. The first one on the list is The Hollow Girl by Reed Farrell Coleman. This is number nine in the Mo Prager series. And um, it, according to Goodreads, this is the final in the Mo Prager series. But we all know that, you know, you never say never because sometimes they come back. Drunk, alone and racked with guilt over the tragic death of his girlfriend, Pam, Mo Prager is destined for oblivion. But destiny takes a detour when a shadowy figure from Mo's past reappears to beg for Mo's help in locating her missing daughter. 
The Hollow Girl by Reed Farrell Coleman. Okay, the second one on the short list is um, a title well known to all of us on BookTube. It is The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith. When novelist Owen Quine goes missing, his wife calls in Detective Cormoran Strike. And as Strike investigates, it becomes clear there's more to Quine's disappearance than his wife realises. The novelist has just completed the manuscript featuring poison pen portraits of almost everyone he knows. So there are a number of people with a motive for keeping him gone. The third one on the short list is Tokyo Kill by Barry Lancet, which is the second in a, the Jim Brody series. San Francisco antiques dealer turned PI Jim Brody matches wits with an elusive group of killers chasing a long lost treasure which has a dangerous history. That one actually sounds like a lot of fun. Fourth on the list is Hounded by David Rosenfeld. This is number 12 in the Andy Carpenter series. And from reading uh, the reviews and stuff on Goodreads, this one looks like it's a much less uh, hard-boiled, a more um, sort of uh, heartwarming kind of type of story. So if that's more your deal, listen up. Defence attorney Andy Carpenter isn't sure what to think when he gets a mysterious phone call from a good friend, policeman Pete Stanton, asking him to drop everything, drive to an unfamiliar address and bring his girlfriend. He certainly isn't expecting to show up at a crime scene, but that's exactly where he arrives, at the house where Pete has just discovered the body of ex-convict Danny Deezer. And upstairs are Danny's now orphaned eight-year-old son and basset hound. The last one on the list is Peter Pan Must Die by John Verdon. This is number four in the Dave Gurney series and I have done my best to come up with a snapshot pricey but this is one of those ones where we've got twists and twists and twists upon our twists. So if you if you love a good puzzle with lots of twists and turns this one might be for you. The daunting task that confronts Gurney, once NYPD's top homicide cop, determining the guilt or innocence of a woman already convicted of shooting her charismatic politician husband, who was felled by a rifle bullet to the brain while delivering the eulogy at his own mother's funeral. My. Okay. So, um... That's 11 different books that I've um, preceded this morning. Which ones of those sound interesting to you? I'd love to hear. And if you've read any of these, I'd especially love to hear what you think about them. Hope you're all well, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.